We're talking 2024 knitting goals. Can you believe it's already a new year? Uh, so grab something warm to drink or your project and um, spend a little time with me. Hi, and welcome back to the Knit Weekend Podcast. I'm Haley, um, hopefully you know me by now, but if it's your first time joining me, I'm a knitter based in Nashville, Tennessee. So, it's a new year, and I thought it would be fun to take a minute to sit down and talk about what I hope to get out of 2024 in terms of my knitting um, journey. So this episode is gonna be a short one, and um, I really, I hope that there's something that you connect with. If there is something that is also on your mind, please leave me a comment down below. I'd love for us to talk about this and kind of help get to these goals and objectives together. This episode is not going to be about patterns that I want to knit as much as what I hope to get out of my knitting overall in the year. Um, I'm going to show you some patterns. I'm just going to kind of pop them up here. Um, as I talk through what my objectives are so that I can kind of show you what I have in my mind. However, keep in mind, these are not patterns that I am committed to or that I promise you that I'm going to knit, just something that kind of goes along the lines of what I'm talking about. Um, so my first goal that I want to chat with you about today actually is a stash goal. Um, and that is to deal with my lonely skeins. Um, and my scraps. What I mean by lonely skeins, I mean those skeins that are left over from other projects or like those skeins that I purchased as a one-off that just seem to accumulate out of nowhere and I don't really know what to do with. So I'm pretty, I feel pretty comfortable with my stash in terms of my sweater quantities. You can see them behind me for the most part. I think I have I don't know, that looks like probably about six. I think I have six sweater quantities, which to me is a completely reasonable amount of sweater quantities for me to knit up in uh, within a year's time. But what is getting a little out of control are my leftover skeins from projects when I bought an extra one and also, um, or like if we are traveling and I went to a yarn shop and kind of bought something a little impulsively without a cast on, I also sometimes buy skeins to swatch when I don't want to commit to a full sweater quantity, but just want to see if it's something that I'd like to use in the future. Um, and then scraps. So things that are not a full skein that I really don't know what to do with. And um, so that is one of my big goals for the year because that is frankly starting to stress me out and get a little out of control. So maybe if that's something that's on your mind too, maybe we could do like a lonely skein knit along or something where we have it be an objective to knit those skeins up. And that may kind of play into my next goal, which is a skill goal. That sounds really weird when you say that back to back and I'm not going to say it five times fast. Um, so let me dial back the time here and let's go back to 2022. In 2022, I set an objective for myself to try out basically every knitting technique to see what drew me in. So I did mosaic knitting, I did a little bit of cables, I did lace, um, I did stranded color work. In fact, it was the rug sweater that you saw me wearing in the 2023 recap video. Um, I tackled all of these to see what drew me in, what piqued my interest. And I landed on cables and mosaic. So for 2023, those were the two things that I wanted to really have some mastery in. And let's say cables, we can check that one off the, off the, we can check that one off the list. Um, I started 2023 with this very dramatic knit and um, yeah, so it was very cable-y and I definitely feel like I have them under my belt. There's no cable I cannot tackle now. And I also knit a fully uh, mosaic shawl. So those were the two knitting skills that I wanted to accomplish in 2023. Looking forward into 2024, there's one skill that I have avoided because frankly, I just did not enjoy it at the time. 
and that is stranded color work. So that is where we are headed for 2024. I would like to have a greater level of comfort. I don't know if I'm gonna call it mastery, but a greater level of comfort with stranded color work. And part of the inspiration for that is actually the shawl that I'm working on. Um, I am currently knitting the artist shawl. I think you've probably heard us talk about this because there are a handful of uh, YouTube podcasters that we are all knitting it together. And I, I have mentioned it in a previous episode as well. So my artist shawl is well underway and I am really enjoying it. It does have mostly just a textured body, but in there, um, there is a stranded color work uh, band, a couple of them actually. So I've avoided strain of color work since my rug sweater and I thought about swapping this out for a mosaic band but I decided not to. I decided to just roll with it um, to see how I could do. It's only a few rows at a time so I thought surely I can do it and it's been fine. Um, it really hasn't been as hard. It's not fast moving. It's definitely a slower row for me but um but it hasn't been as bad as I thought it would and I think that is because I gave myself a little bit of a challenge on some of my Christmas gift knits that I don't think I really talked about in those segments um I'm an English style knitter I've mentioned that previously but my challenge that I gave myself for the gift knits for the waffle beanies that I made was to knit them continental so I did learn how to purl continental. Um, and I already knew how to knit, I just wasn't very confident in continental knitting, but I didn't know how to purl at all. So I have now gained more confidence in my continental, uh, both knit stitch and purl stitch. And I think that has made the stranded color work a lot easier because I do knit stranded color work two-handed. I also, learned on the rug sweater that because I do that, I actually don't have to go up a needle size for my stranded color work. So I think having that knowledge and this new skill will allow me to tackle some color work projects a lot easier. So I'm gonna start with small things, probably maybe beanies, socks, mittens. Um, but by the end of the year, I would really love to have knitted a stunning color work uh, sweater. So that's goal number two. Goal number three has to do with overall kind of wardrobe, knitting wardrobe and what I would like. I have, I love a dramatic masterpiece of a project, but I am the first to admit that they're not necessarily always the most wearable. Um, this for instance is not going under any coat that I own. Uh, and so I would like uh, to knit more, focus on knitting more wearable items. I'm not promising you I won't take on some dramatic project when I get a little bored, um, but I would like to find a way to incorporate items into my daily work wardrobe um, and life a little bit easier. I wear something hand knit almost every single day. Um, and I find that the ones that I wear most are the sweaters and tees with maybe four to six inches of positive ease rather than the very oversized ones. So that's kind of where I'm headed. Um, probably going to see a lot more classic knits from me this year, um, which hopefully won't be too boring. May keep the drama, uh, save the drama for the accessories and that sort of thing. Um, some ideas that I have, I've got a couple sweaters that I would like to maybe re-knit with a few modifications. So uh, I think just something a bit more wearable, a bit easier um, to fit into the wardrobe would be really nice to have. And that kind of brings me to another goal about cohesion. And that's with yarn acquisitions. So. A few days ago, I saw a post from Moonstruck Knits, who you know I love, and it, I'll put it right here, and I was just blown away by how cohesive this 2023 capsule collection is that she posted. Um, and I realized that maybe I want that to be the goal. Um, I love how all of these yarns and textures play off of each other. I think for the accessories, you could pretty well mix and match them with any of the um, sweater projects and be really satisfied. 
So when I am purchasing yarns um, and selecting patterns going forward, I want to work toward creating more of a capsule collection. I already have a lot of my yarns that I plan to knit up this year in stash. So I don't know that um, this goal will be something that I will have a capsule collection for this year at the end of the year. Um, but I want to be mindful of this when I'm acquiring new yarns going forward that I just want the pieces to play nicely together, complement each other, and be more interchangeable. Before I started knitting, I was a big fan of the capsule wardrobe, kind of lost sight of that in my knitting because I was just so excited to cast everything on. Um, but I think that this in some way would give me some liberation to not feel like I need to churn out as many projects. Um, if the projects all work nicely together, you could have one or two shawls that go with all of your sweaters rather than, you know, a shawl for every sweater. So I think that'll be a kind of a major challenge of being more thoughtful and mindful in the knitting sphere as well. So those are the knitting goals that I have. I do have one more goal and that is around spinning. Uh, I mentioned in the last podcast, like full length podcast, that I have started to learn how to hand spin yarn. And it is definitely a challenge. I'm not saying that what I have spun so far is at all going to be usable for me. I have, let's see, the, the bobbins are right there. I have two bobbins done, not plied, a third bobbin well underway. So my goal for 2024, frankly, this is not a reach goal, is just to spin something that is usable. And I'd like to do that by the end of the summer. I have a little confession to make. I don't really enjoy summer knitting as much as some other folks. There's a few reasons. One, fibers of summer knits, generally silk, cotton, that sort of thing, are not as easy on my hands. I love the feel of wool on my needles and I can only knit so many cotton or silk projects uh, before I just want to throw my hands up in the air and say no more. The other thing is, living in the South, you cannot have a wooly wool project on your lap come the height of summer, let's say July and August. So my plan for those months um, is to really focus on spinning in those months. I think that will just be really fun to kind of have a little bit of a seasonal shift and then also have something that I can use to knit up for the fall and winter. Um, so I'm not, say not saying it's going to be perfect, um, but something that is usable coming off of the spinning wheel would just be a really great goal as I start to learn how to spin. So yeah, so I think that is... I mean, the short and sweet version of my 2024 knitting goals and objectives. I hope there's something there that you connect with. If there is, like I said, leave a comment down below um, because if we can kind of work together to hold each other accountable or help each other learn or whatever the case may be, I would be into that. If you guys have any knit along uh, suggestions that you'd like to do, I'd never I've never hosted a knit along, but I think that would be a fun podcast goal um, for the year is to really just build this community space a little bit more. So um, yeah, I think that um, I think that pretty well wraps this up. I always get a little stuck here at the end. I really need to come up with a sign off, but anyway, thank you again for joining me and until we chat next time.